Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we start a whole new playlist series where we look at the conversion of this transit van into my fishing wagon. We're going to be looking at power supplies, solar, interior diesel heating, we're going to carry a microwave, refrigeration and everything else that we need to support extended trips away. I've specifically chose a medium wheelbase medium or high roof, this ended up being a high roof transit van for various different aspects. And I had a tick list of things that I needed to accomplish to make it what I need it to be. This now extends my range throughout the rest of the country, all the way up to Scotland. And we've got trips planned for Scotland. So I'll show you through what I've actually got and show you a little bit more detail about the van. The entire van is alarmed and the side and rear doors have got additional locks. Additional locks fitted to the van won't stop someone from trying to tear open this side door. So to that end, we've got a mini project to do where we fit additional security plates that prevent anyone, even if they use a crowbar, physically impossible to get one of these doors open. They're never gonna find anything because I don't store anything in there, but they'll do the damage nonetheless. Head height inside the van is six foot two, and I'm only just scratching five foot seven, so there's plenty of head height for me to stand up in this van. There's a decent rhino roof rack that could carry two fishing kayaks, and stood on their side, you could get two fully inflated sibs inside the van. The van is 10 foot long from bulkhead to door. With that in mind, the capacity for kayaks on the roof sibs inside and a tow bar. This van being a higher capacity van, three and a half ton total, will carry a significant size boat or carry or tow a significant size boat. We're talking 20 foot in excess of 20 feet. So it future proofs the van. This whole thing now is worth my investment of time and effort for mobile fishing trips. I can support future kayak excursions, sib, boat trips and possibly in the future when I buy a boat to tow behind it. All that coupled with a load area that's massive and the fact that I can just carry all my kit. I can carry all the kit for three people and not worry about it. As you can see behind me now, the bulkhead or the factory fitted bulkhead, it's a nicely engineered piece of kit, but I've got, I've got a distinct feeling that I'm gonna remove it going to remove it and replace it with a curtain. The reason why you replace it with a curtain is you don't want people looking through the van and seeing what or who is in the back, especially when you're stealth camping. Um, I'm, uh, I'm a bit reluctant because I like the security it affords and it also means that in the winter the cab warms up quite quick. But thinking it through and where this is going to go eventually, I think if we fitted a proper um, blackout curtain in place of this, then that would give us the better of the two options. We are going to fit diesel heat into this van. So in truth, pre-warming the van, warming the van. And when we are parked up, it gives us the option to open the curtains even slightly because there won't be no other windows fitted to the van. You'll get the light through the front of the van as well. So I think one of the first jobs is for the bulkhead to come out. But that I'll have to wait for another day because there's a little bit, more. not concerning, but there's another job that takes precedence. And the job that I need to sort out is the floor. And I'll show you what I mean. So the floor of the van has got some kind of bed liner material on it. And although it's nice and durable, I need a solid wood floor for what my intentions are and my use of the, of the van. And I intend using phenolic board, which is high grade ply with like a grip friction surface to it, a black surface. It's quite expensive, but I think it's worth the investment. The major downside is that the van is actually interior, it's 10 foot long, um, in excess of 10 foot. So I would have liked to have bought a 10 by five board, but a 10 by five board is still too small and they're quite expensive. So I'm gonna have to buy two boards and join it. That would be the subject of a, of a project all of its own. But also when you look at the floor, it's not bad, it needs a good clean up, 
but unfortunately somebody has drilled some holes in it. Drilled some holes in it because this had some equipment in it previously and the holes like that one there and that one there there are about a dozen holes in the floor. Now the quick and easy bodge method would be to put some non-setting mastic on a bolt head and just put a bolt through nut and bolt it and be done with it. I'm not too happy with that to be honest. I'm not too happy with that and I think I'm going to go the route of welding up the holes, grind them back, prep them, seal them before I put the wooden flooring down. As you can see looking inside the van now this is where the head height comes into play and makes it gives it a whole nother area of use. Instead of being hunched over, a medium roof would have been this sort of high and a low roof even lower. Six foot two from floor to ceiling. I'm gonna lose almost an inch when I lay the floor down, not quite an inch. So six foot one, head height, and that gives me all the room. And when you look at the size of everything in total, even when you back right up into the corner, you've still got all this room and all this room out inside you. So it gives me lots of options for what I want to do. And it gives me a lot of flexibility with all the different aspects of fishing that I'd like to cover and put on camera for the channel. And also for the, the looking after of my equipment that's quite fragile, some of it, charging of batteries, security storage. We're gonna be looking at all of those. And it's, it, for me, it's going to give me a whole new lease of what I can do and what I can film. What I can film and then put onto the channel. It's going to be an interesting playlist series, I think. I'm really looking forward to it. Really excited. And as you can see, it's a medium wheelbase, high roof transit van. It's 2014 and it's got 68,000 miles on the clock. For those that know and you look at the suspension and ride height, it's got the heavy duty suspension. It's got the twin batteries for the starting, cranking and for the auxiliaries. Heat screen, air con, six speed, three seats. Absolutely perfect for what I need for a fishing wagon. Let me just have a quick look round. It's not in bad condition. It's not perfect. It's got a few little nicks and scratches, a few dinks and danks, but then be struggling to find a six-year-old van that hasn't. It's taken me quite a while to find this one. It's got a decent roof rack, capable of carrying two kayaks. The van itself is capable of carrying two sibs inside. You can see the greater wheel arch clearance there from the heavier. This is the full three and a half ton spec van. So it's got the heavy duty rear leaf springs. Will carry a considerable amount of weight inside. Moving round to the back, just looking up at the top, it's got the extra security locks. You can just make out the top of the roof rack up there and the height of the doors, the rear barn doors. They're like a full 18 inches higher than a, than a low roof, roof uh, transit van. And that's what's going to give me the flexibility to do what I need. You can see the additional locks at the bottom, but we've got a plan for the security of the doors at the top, which is going to be another additional aspect, and we will do a minor project on that. And then looking inside, I have got a cheap set of seat covers on, because I don't want to ruin the seats that are there, because they are in such good condition. And generally, quite a tidy van. For a six-year-old van, it's quite tidy. And there we have it. I hope you've enjoyed the brief introduction to the fishing wagon today. There's going to be a whole series of films that are following their own playlist as we develop the van. It's not going to be, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to develop slowly, but I'll keep you all updated. We'll develop the van. We'll use it. We'll see what we like. We'll change what we don't. And I'm hoping that you will all comment and give me some support and help me out with ideas, with suggestions, <laughs> tell me what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> Encourage me if I'm doing it right. And uh, yeah, you can follow me as I develop the fishing wagon and hopefully you'll see me one day soon on a beach near you. Tight lines and happy fishing and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye for now.